This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I've been building little FPV space shuttle lifting body gliders for a long time, mainly because I find it oddly satisfying when a high wing loading, stubby little glider comes in hot and does a perfect flare to touchdown. Not sure why, but I just find it so mesmerizing. In the past years, I've had a few models sort of come close to scratching this itch, like this foam board delta wing with a big heavy steel bolt glued to the bottom of it. It was surprisingly controllable for how small and heavy it was, and after being dropped vertically from a drone, it was able to pull up and kind of skim along the surface of the ground before touching down. Or crashing into the fence. More recently, I built a bunch of these fully 3D printed lifting body bathtub looking things that actually flew better than you might think. Most of the time they would tumble uncontrollably or just pancake down at a super steep glide angle, but a few times I was able to maintain control and build up enough airspeed to actually pull out of the dive and fly with a pretty respectable glide slope. I never really achieved the perfect flare to touchdown that I was hoping for, but just the fact that these things actually flew seemed like nothing short of a miracle. Around the same time, I built this blended wing lifting body. Before making this RC version, I tested out a passive free flight version of the same design, and it flew decently well. But unfortunately, the RC FPV version never straightened out to level flight. It just spiraled all the way down. I also built this 3D printed delta wing design, but it met a similar fate. After that, I made this glider version of the Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser, and it looked pretty cool, but came nowhere near actually being able to fly. So those were all past projects. Now on to the present. Sebastian here made a custom ArduPilot flight mode designed just for these drop gliders. What it does is set the desired pitch angle of the aircraft based on the aircraft's measured altitude. Here we are walking down a steep hill to test it out. You can see how as the altitude changes, the desired pitch target in degrees also changes. We used a parabolic curve to map the pitch angle to the altitude, so after the plane is dropped off of the drone, it will have a negative 90 degree pitch angle, which means it will be pointing straight towards the ground. Then as it gets lower, the pitch angle will increase until it's slightly positive, just above ground level. This will hopefully make the plane pull up into a perfect flare just before touching down. All completely automatically, without any human input. So to test this out, I needed to design a nice stable airplane that would be easy to repair, so I hopped into Onshape and drew up this foam board space shuttle. I also used Onshape to convert it into tiled PDF plans. So if you want to build this plane yourself, just click on the Onshape link in the description and sign up for a free account and then click the link below that opens this file. Then go down here and click export, and then you can download the tiled PDF file. After that, you'll be able to print it out with a normal 2D printer, cut out the templates, and transfer them onto foam board. This design is super simple and only uses three parts. One of the cool things about the space shuttle geometry is that the CG is almost correct without any nose weight, just based off the natural weight distribution of the material. Next, I cut elevons, installed servos, and the flight controller. And then to make it more durable, I poured expanding polyurethane foam into the nose to make it solid. And then it was off to the park for the first test. Look at that. Picture perfect. This GPS isn't working. Do you know how to fly drones, Sebastian? Sure, which one am I doing? The, the quadcopter? Yeah. <laughs> which, which way is forwards? It's facing away from us. Okay. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Fly by wire A and drop. Oh, dude. <laughs> that was pretty sketch. Yeah, why didn't we test it? That's the bigger question. Watch. Ah, it just gets stuck right there. Okay, there's just a little tiny plastic burr that's catching this string. So you need to shave that down. It should work. Let's try it. Is that it? I don't know. Here we go. Dropping in three, two, one. Woo! Oh, it's flying upside down. Now it's flying right side up. Wow, it worked. Whoa, 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 where's the, uh... Hey, Daniel, which one's the disarm switch? Drop it in three, two, one. Oh, wait. Okay, drop. Get off of there. Okay. There we go. Woo! Oh, it worked! <laughs> On that flight, it just didn't pull up soon enough, and then it just hit the ground with some downwards velocity still, so... I think, which one's altitude? Yeah, altitude, no, altitude goes this way. It's this is altitude? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we just need to shift the whole curve this way a little bit. You see this? Not good. It's winter time here in the Northwest and 90% of the time it looks like this outside. Just dreary and depressing. I've learned to not let the weather affect my mood that much, but when it's just rainy and drizzly like this all the time, it can really put you down. It's especially bad when I'm wanting to go film a project outside and it just won't stop raining. Times like these can be taxing on one's mental health, but it turns out just talking to someone can really help improve your mood and your outlook on life. In Steps BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video.
For most people, the best thing you can do for your mental health is to sign up for an online therapy service. BetterHelp is super convenient because it's all done remotely, and that makes therapy really easy to squeeze into your busy schedule. BetterHelp now has over 30,000 therapists on their books, so there's no doubt you'll be matched with someone who can really help you out. They have an amazing algorithm which will help with this, and in most cases, you can get paired with a therapist within 48 hours. If you think you might benefit from therapy, you can click on the link in the description box or go to betterhelp.com slash rctestflight. Using this link helps support the channel, which is super cool, but it can also get you 10% off of your first month there. With BetterHelp, you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable. There's text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist anytime that's good for you, and you can even schedule a live chat. There have now been over 4 million people that have used BetterHelp. I've used it, it's been great for me, and I'm happy to be able to recommend it to my audience. Now, back to the video. Three, two, one. Whoa. Huh. It doesn't seem like your mode is working this time. <laughs> Interesting. Those geese are like almost as tall as those kids. Fly by wire A and drop. Oh no, it's in a spiral. Oh, there we go. Oh, hit a tree. F these are some gnarly blackberry bushes. So we spent probably 30 minutes trying to get the plane out of these dense thorn bushes, and it was pretty broken, but nothing that couldn't be fixed. Then it was off to a bigger park for another test of Sebastian's autopilot flare code. After quite a few more test flights, it became clear that the altitude from which the plane was dropped and the amount that it tumbled before straightening out had a big effect on the airspeed, and variance in the airspeed would cause a slight variance in the pitch control loop, so the pitch angle at touchdown did not end up being very repeatable with a high level of accuracy. Oh, a little bit better. Ugh, ate a little grass. So this time I just slid the center of gravity a little bit further back, and I'm going to try it again. Drop. Whoa! Oh, perfect! That was epic! <laughs> okay, so that goes to show... Okay, let me get the drone coming home here. That goes to show that... What does that go to show? The aircraft is not purely doing exactly what the autopilot wants it to. It's got some room for adjustment just with its own aerodynamic flight uh, characteristics, which makes sense. So what you see here is just about as good as it's ever gonna get with this thing. Simply mapping the target pitch angle to altitude leaves way too much room for airspeed variance, which ultimately has a huge impact on the actual curve that the aircraft follows as it pulls up. So this system was pretty inaccurate. In order to do this properly, you would need to design a system that utilizes the pitch angle, the altitude, and the airspeed to calculate the target pitch angle. And it would also be smart to use a LiDAR rangefinder instead of a barometric pressure sensor for altitude measurement, because those can drift with changes in weather and airspeed. From the Insta360 Go video, it looks like it's overtuned. It gets into an oscillation. But that landing was really good. It looked like it was at the, the perfect attitude right as it touched down. It's a nice little flare or at least pulled out of the dive perfectly i don't think it really flared so i tried this again on a few different days and it didn't really have much success it would either not pull up out of a tumble until it was too late or it would just level out with not enough airspeed and end up too high we're way too high oh oh, oh. <laughs> but that's not the end of the story i wanted to try out this autopilot flare mode on an airplane that's a little less floaty and forgiving than the foam board space shuttle so i hopped back into onshape and designed this it's an enlarged version of the 3d printed shuttle type glider from my solid wood airplane video in that video this design flew really well and the coolest thing about it is that you could just print it as is and the natural weight distribution had the perfect center of gravity no additional weight was needed to balance it out so for this project, I enlarged it and made control surfaces and a cavity inside for all the electronics. This design is also available for your own use at the link in the description. I printed all the parts out of normal PLA at first because I wanted it to be heavy. Making it super lightweight would kind of defeat the purpose, and I may as well just would have stuck with the foam board plane. The elevons were held in place with little pieces of steel wire. Those actually turned out really nice. The plane is printed in three main sections, and those just all get glued together with some alignment pins to make sure everything is straight. Next, it was time for the electronics. I'm using a little Omnibus F4 flight controller to run Sebastian's custom code on, and I'm also throwing in a DJI FPV system so I can pilot the plane from a first-person perspective. All that stuff got shoved in the fuselage, and that just about completes the build. This thing turned out looking pretty cool, but will it fly? Let's find out. The answer is... sort of? Uh, maybe? Nope. 
it just wasn't able to straighten out and get into stable flight before hitting the ground. Nothing a little tape can't fix. On the next drop, it just went into a flat spin. And on the drop after that, it just kind of tumbled. So in order to increase its chances of leveling out into stable flight, I decided to use the same guide rod that I had attached to the drone during the solid wood airplane video. Keep in mind, this is a tiny plane that weighs one and a half pounds. So that's the main reason why getting this thing to fly is so difficult. The wing loading is extremely high. But again, that's kind of the point. Take it in while you can, because this thing will probably end up as a pile of plastic shards pretty soon. So, will it work? Uh, this time it actually kind of worked. It pulled out of the dive and it was flying fairly flat and level, but then the roll axis started oscillating, probably because it was in a stall, and then it just spiraled into the ground. So I plugged it into Mission Planner and reduced the stabilization gains. Then it was back up in the air. This time, once again, it was able to pull out of the dive and level off. I should mention that I'm just piloting the plane manually here, trying to get it to actually fly. I'm not running Sebastian's automatic flare code yet. Once again, the roll axis started oscillating and it had a rough landing. There were a few more flights that were pretty similar. The flight controller just didn't seem like it was tuned well and it also kind of seemed to be glitching a bit. This could have also just been weird aerodynamic stuff going on. Tough to say. But eventually I caved in and just printed one out of lightweight PLA. This one was about 40% lighter than the normal PLA version. And will it fly? Uh, whoa, whoa, uh, it got off to a bit of a rough start, but it did eventually straighten out and glide in for a nice landing. On the next drop, it really went. I was just trying to keep the wings level and it flew all the way to a different field. It still seemed like the plane was tuned very poorly. It was very difficult to tune the autopilot stabilization gains for this plane because it was only ever in the air for a few seconds at a time. I would pretty much just have to drop it and observe if there were any oscillations, and if there were then I would reduce the gains by some random amount and try again. I ended up with a proportional gain near zero for the pitch and roll rates. For whatever reason, the plane never really flew again after that point, so I was unable to test out Sebastian's autopilot flare coat on it. But that's okay, at least we still got that one good automatic landing with the foam board shuttle, and that one good flight with the 3D printed plane was pretty satisfying. This type of project is super difficult because it takes a lot of iterations to get right, and every fail is usually catastrophic and you have to rebuild the entire plane all over again. I'd like to revisit this again in the future, but with a better way of dropping the planes. Maybe dropping them from an airplane that already has forward airspeed would increase their chance of pulling out of the dive. But then again, if the glider is truly an aerodynamically stable aircraft, it should be able to straighten out and pull out of the dive regardless of the orientation or speed at which it was dropped. But anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, this is the nose. Oh, wow. It's really in there.